Hello there, it's uh, Adil, uh, Mr. Intermarket Analysis, bringing you a review of the FTSE for Friday's trading, the uh, 13th of December 2013. Okay, so it's been, I think, two days since I last did my video, uh, so it's been interesting times. The last 24 to 48 hours have been very, very volatile, uh, with uh, a lot of divergences galore, uh, and a lot of uh, currencies uh, moving in the uh, opposite direction. Uh, one example. Uh, just obviously you always start with covering fundamentals is the Aussie. Uh, the Aussie and the FTSE are very positively correlated because they're both related to commodities okay Aussie is renowned as a commodity currency and uh, there seems to be a divergence uh, to a large extent whereas the Aussie is down quite heavily due to central bank intervention given the fact that one of the RBA policy makers talked it down today and uh, and obviously the FTSE is down but not in proportion to the Aussie so and uh, prior to that the FTSE was falling whilst the Aussie was uh, holding uh, holding higher um, especially the, that was the case this morning uh, the Aussie itself was ramping higher given the fact that the uh, employment data was slightly better than expected although the uh, unemployment level did, did rise but the uh, new jobs 10,000 new jobs created better than expected and that initially helped the Aussie higher whilst the FTSE was lagging and failing. So, um, interesting times. So basically, the last 24 to 48 hours basically have been all front running. That's basically all the way in which I can explain it. I said it on Twitter. I said the uh, the dirt, well, basically the dirty scoundrels, the insider traders, basically all the hedge funds, etc. They already have uh, they already have the uh, they already have access to the uh, retail sales data in advance. Okay, so they knew that the retail sales will be better than expected. They're positioning themselves and dumping the markets in advance, and that's the reason why the FTSE broke and, and broke lower. Uh, and also, there is another variable why the FTSE broke lower, and that was due to sterling. But given the fact that sterling is off its high, um, uh, yeah, the argument doesn't really hold either. So, uh, basically, what what do we have with regards to FTSE? FTSE has been lagging all uh, major uh, global indices. It's been lagging the US. It's been lagging you in. The European indices as well, um, and also it has an inverse relationship with copper, which is quite strange. Uh, I'll give you an example of why uh, there's a conundrum with regards to the FTSE. You've had a nice inverted head and shoulders pattern on copper, as you can see here, uh, and obviously, as we know, uh, FTSE uh, is heavily weighted towards the mining s uh, stocks and oil stocks. So, if copper is moving higher, what do you think happens to the FTSE? The FTSE moves higher. But what, what has the FTSE been doing? It's moving, been moving in the opposite direction. So again, uh, another conundrum. Okay, uh, oil price. Okay, oil price has been moving higher. The FTSE is heavily reliant on oil. What do you think happens to the FTSE? The FTSE moves higher. It's broken out of its bullish channel. Technically, the FTSE would sorry break broken out of its bearish channel, moved higher. Technically, the FTSE should move higher as well. It hasn't. It's been moving in the opposite direction. So the FTSE, from my perspective, has to play catch up. Okay. Now I have issued a long swing long trade on my fundamental analysis service on the FTSE. Uh, I went long today, um, uh, six four three seven. So those of you that are interested, uh, I am offering it for free for the next few months. Okay, I mean I don't know how many months I'll offer it for free. Basically at present it's 130 points and counting. Okay, uh, at present so it's doing well. Uh, active trade I have is a Barclays long position that's slightly underwater at present. Uh, but my uh, stop loss is at 235. I'm looking at three pound target on Barclays. Um, so those of you that want to follow me on the fundamental analysis service, click on fund analysis service and you'll see that my trades are there. So the latest trade I've entered obviously is the 6437 long on the FTSE. Stop loss 6237 and uh, I'm looking for a target of around 6637 on the upside, if not higher. Okay, so that's basically my uh, my analysis and uh, I'll try and put up a video explaining why my fund, why I'm taking the swing long, but generally speaking, it's due to the fact that the FTSE is uh, needs to play catch up to commodities, given the fact that commodities have moved higher. Also, the oil demand, uh, the forecast for oil certainly has risen again. That's positive for commodities, and uh, gold itself is forming a base. Copper, as I've already shown, as an inverted head and shoulders target, which is quite bullish. So again, FTSE should be moving higher. Okay, uh, just an article I was reading here as well on the um, on the Reuters uh, platform. I uh, um, basically uh, we have uh, uh, good news for the FTSE. Um, Meet Dave. Uh, Two years ago, he found the perfect well. place to put down roots. Uh, just neutralise this. Okay, so we had um, we've got uh, UK economy set for fastest growth in seven years, 
etc etc we expand its fastest rate in seven years blah 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 so again um certainly good news for the uk economy so it certainly needs to play catch up in terms of fundamentals um we do have a lot of data with regards to commodities uh, just bring that up quickly on my reuters icon platform one second okay so yes yeah, so overall um certainly bullish uh, on the FTSE going into Friday, that's basically my conclusion. Uh, I'll go into fund, uh, well, go into uh, a technical shortly. Uh, I'll explain my reasoning. Okay, I um, okay. So uh, there was an article that I was trying to find. Okay, well, solid UK UK retail sales again. You know, fundamentally the economy is strong in, in the US. Obviously, tapering concerns. Really, with the, given the fact that the FTSE's fallen three to four hundred points, that's all factored in now to the markets. Uh, and also given the fact that uh, what's one of the most important charts from my perspective given the fact that Shanghai is a global leader uh, you've got the uh, Shanghai index now with an inverted head and shoulders formation so watch out for this this is your inverted head and shoulders formation now again I'll just give you an insight with regards to fundamental analysis this is one of the variables that I'm basing my FTSE trade on okay given the fact that I'm long on the FTSE uh, and uh, you've got an unfilled gap above here and obviously looking to break out and testing and making new highs and that Santa Claus uh, coming to town okay so certainly looking bullish on the Shanghai so we should get a bullish move on the Shanghai overnight and obviously that will give a bullish slant and bias to the FTSE itself I am long DAX already anyway with subscribers on a live analysis service uh, currently sit on 200 points for the week on the live analysis service although I was 222 points um, on uh, on a Tuesday or a Wednesday uh, until we got the volatility and obviously I had a lot of stop losses I had my stop loss triggered on the FTSE long as you know from my last video I was long the FTSE I had a stop loss triggered there I'll explain and elaborate as to why that was triggered and the reason why the markets reversed etc etc so uh, yeah last two days have been quite tricky to be honest uh, but still sitting on our 200 points uh, on the live analysis service and 130 points in the fundamental analysis service so net net 330 points for the week life is good okay um, it's all about obviously good money management good risk management having faith in your analysis doing your hard work etc etc studying your setups doing your homework so on and so forth okay so let's go to the FTSE now okay so technicals itself okay so obviously we've broken this trend line here on the daily chart which is obviously I expected a 200 MA to hold I was expecting in my last video like I explained I was expecting some sort of consolidation here uh, let me just draw this properly so expecting some sort of consolidation here once we consolidated then um, looking for a thrust higher to test the upper channel so obviously that didn't transpire given the fact that US indices uh, I can't really go into that in this detail uh, if people do want to learn my methodology and my style of trading that obviously exceeds 200 points a week for the last seven years then um, it's uh, the mentoring program that you should be interested in taking out if you especially over Christmas I mean I tend to be quite busy anyway but um, certainly something that if you want to obviously over the holiday season etc you want to improve your understanding and, and uh, obviously knowledge of the markets and I have a mentoring program there's a YouTube video explaining how I operate etc and how I teach via Skype so that's something that you might be interested in okay and um, that should certainly give you an insight so at present I obviously last video I expected uh, obviously some sort of consolidation and obviously test the upper channel here given the fact that we have an unfilled gap at 6600 that obviously failed to transpire because US indices started to uh, get uh, spooked by the tapering concerns and obviously that led the, uh, the f obviously we all know that when the Americans sneeze we catch pneumonia and that caused the FTSE to uh, fall out of bed even though remember copper bullish, oil bullish, gold bullish uh, Aussie was bullish until obviously Mr Stevens stepped in again that's not a risk off scenario that's the central banks manipulating uh, Euro itself, generally speaking, has been bullish, uh, but obviously that that again that has central banks intervening, given the fact that we're back at the Draghi rate cut. Okay, so again you can ignore that, you can't use that as a risk barometer at present, given the fact that central banks are intervening. Uh, the only two risk barometers that any everybody should be following at present is the Japanese yen pairs, USD, JPY, EJ, because the market is 100% correlated to those. Okay, uh, because it's a kaya trade, uh, cheap yen, obviously you pump it into the stock market to get higher returns. Okay, so. Right, so yes, going back to this uh, pink trend line, broken, okay, so this is, this trend line should be discarded once it's broken as traders, okay, so obviously support level now is at uh, 6425, uh, 6410, solid, solid support, I don't expect this trend line to be breached, to be honest, going into tomorrow, uh, obviously if it's breached then we, we do go lower, 
and we test the uh, 6330 region again very unlikely okay very very unlikely from my perspective but that's my my trades my analysis I encourage everybody to do their own trading okay so again uh, 6410 6430 solid solid support and uh, given given the fact this is a weekly chart and obviously this candle hasn't closed uh, I will not be surprised if you close back at 6500 by tomorrow okay and to be honest with you that's exactly what I'm expecting okay and I and I show you why on the smaller time frames okay so let's quickly look at the FTSE 250 chart FTSE 250 chart back into support okay so we're back into horizontal support previous Excuse me, previous resistance equals support here. Okay, and uh, obviously that was a previous pivot high there. So that obviously that uh, acts as support as well on this occasion. And uh, certainly expect this level to hold going into tomorrow. Okay, right, so let's go to our smaller time frames now. So FTSE uh, 100. Okay, so let's have a look at a 60 minute chart. Right, okie dokie then. So just connecting these trend lines here, obviously you've got two, you've got the red trend line going down, you've got the purple trend line. Which I've connected, and uh, obviously we are into support, given the fact that that's a 60-minute chart. Okay, so basically, what do we have here? So, as traders, whenever a HNS formation is triggered, uh, now remember, uh, a HNS uh, formation at the bottom of a chart has a very low probability of playing out, given the fact that the U.S. markets, and this is where I was obviously looking for an inverted head and shoulders pattern. If you remember from my last video, I was looking for this pattern to play out here. So, left shoulder, this was going to be the head. And I'll be given the fact that we've already put on a pit of pivot low here. We come back up here, retest it, boom, and close the gap. Okay, because remember all gaps are like magnets, they always attract price action towards it. And obviously, once we close the gap, then obviously given the fact that we're back into that six six hundred level, we've tested the upper channel on the daily chart, and then obviously we can go down again. As as you know, trading, you know, is um it's all about doing your homework and studying yourselves, etc. etc. That failed to transpire. Now that was happening, the market was breaking down even when copper and oil and gold were going higher. Kiwi was going higher, Aussie was going higher, Japanese yen pairs were going higher. Hence the reason why the last two days have been quite frustrating as a trader, okay? Uh, but that's all part of trading. It doesn't really make a difference to me, as you said. Uh, we always put our stop losses in. If we're wrong, we're wrong. So who cares, okay? On to our next trade. Let's study your setup again everything else is irrelevant okay that's basically how you become an elite trader okay if you want to be part of the top five percent of traders that consistently make money in the markets day in day out it's all about doing studying your setups doing your homework understanding why a pattern is occurring so given the fact that this hns obviously has uh, succeed successfully played out which again to my surprise uh, from the teacher people that i've been taught by um, especially uh, my honorable teachers nicholas santiago Garth, so obviously um Soloway uh, in the money stocks dom uh, stocks dot com who taught me my technicals, and obviously I have my own uh, respected, uh, well respected uh, fundamental traders at university. Obviously my professor, Mr. Professor Zhang. Uh, but from this perspective, at present, obviously technicals state that if uh, HNS formation hits its target, you generally get a short squeeze, given the fact that everybody's looking to cover their shorts. Obviously, target's been hit on the downside. So given the fact that the neckline there is uh, around the six five hundred level, the uh, head is around the six five seventy. Project 70 points down, 6430 is your target, and that's exactly where we are, okay? 6430 level, so hence you'll get a short squeeze at 6430. If you get a short squeeze, given the fact that it coincides with this purple trend line here, okay, uh, and uh, up we go, okay? Given the fact that we've got an unfilled gap now at 6500, again, remember when I said 6500 is very important before, okay? Yeah, so remember that on the daily charts, 6500, weekly, sorry, weekly chart. I will not be surprised that we go back to the 6500 on the date on the weekly chart and put in a bottoming tail and close higher. Now you understand why, okay? So given the fact that we have the unfilled gap at 6510, 6510 to be precise, given the fact that we've hit our HNS formation target in the 60 minutes charts, we have a short squeeze, we go higher, we close the gap above, okay? Bear that in mind, okay? So that's basically what I'm expecting to, go, to occur tomorrow. Uh, given the fact that the retail sales have come out, but the caveat there, which a lot of individuals have keep forgetting, remember, the Federal Reserve said that one point, uh, their target inflation target is 2%, and um, their inflation currently is at 1.1%. Yes, retail sales came out better than expected, but jobless claims dropped. Okay, jobless claims dropped. Bear that in mind, okay? That's one of the reasons why I'm long DAX, and I will be looking to obviously go long the, the, the FTSE tomorrow and long the NASDAQ as well. Again, I can go into great detail as to why the Nasdaq's going to go higher tomorrow. 
I don't have time at present. Uh, if you want to learn, then again, join my live analysis service where you get access to my, my trades in real time. Uh, or alternatively, uh, you can take the mentoring program and I'll elaborate on there, okay? There's only so much I can do in terms of the videos, okay? So um, basically, looking for the move here, okay? So let's go to our 10 minute chart now that I've explained and elaborated uh, on the uh, 60 minutes, okay? So 60 minutes chart. So where, where are we in the 60 minutes? So we've had this bearish channel. Remember, all channel, all bearish channels eventually break to the upside. What happens once it breaks to the upside? You have a short squeeze, okay? So what 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 what's happening right here now? So basically, we've had a bearish channel, we've broken out, okay? We've got a symmetrical wedge pattern now. The 20 MA is sloping upwards, therefore momentum is now turning bullish. Once the 20 goes above the 50 MA, expect momentum to be bullish and move higher, okay? You've got previous um, uh, uh, support equals resistance at uh, the level here. 6485 so watch that as a resistance level watch the gap level at 6490 eventually previous support equals resistance at 6500 and then obviously you've got gap fill resistance here at 6510 and then obviously the 200 ma above okay so watch out for those levels above okay so um yep so symmetrical wedge which way is it going to break it's going to break higher why because the, the shanghai has an inverted head and shoulders pattern the nasdaq is at, at support etc 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 i can go on folks again there's only so much i can go into this video and this video is already long enough as it is okay so symmetrical wedge breakout upwards and close the gap above that's basically what i'm expecting to happen um like i said 200 points for the week so far hopefully looking to uh i need to nail 300 points next week uh, sorry th tomorrow so uh need to get 100 points tomorrow so that'll be my target 100 points tomorrow with subscribers and the live analysis service set myself a challenge and uh, that's basically what trading is, folks. I mean, like I said, it can get mundane, you know, uh, just trading day in, day out, etc., etc. You need to self set yourself challenges, etc. So uh, make you work harder, okay? So it makes you work harder and uh, push yourself, okay? Always be willing to push yourself. So just drawing another trend line here in real time. I'll just do this here. So obviously we've broken this bearish channel, broken that bearish channel. So micro, micro bearish channels. And uh, we are making a base here now at 6, 4, um, 6435, 6440. Again, like I said, it coincides with the HNS formation being hit, etc. etc. So watch out for that pattern there. Okie dokie then. So I think I'll call it quits, folks. So risk on, risk off, wax on, wax off. Goodbye now.